Hello there, my name is Christopher Scott and I serve as a small groups pastor of a local church. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to involve everyone in the organization of your small group as well as in the discussion of your small group, okay? As a small groups pastor, I like to give uh, videos that help train our facilitators how to lead a good and healthy small group, right? So you might be a small group facilitator, you might teach a Sunday school, maybe you lead a support group, something like this. This is some tips for how you can get everybody involved to organize the group each and every week, as well as to get everybody involved in the discussion of the group each and every week, right? And so I wanna talk about this because on Sundays, People come to church and they sit and they passively listen to a sermon. But when they go to your small group during the week, we want them to actively discuss what they are learning, right? So Sundays they go, they sit. Sunday uh, During the week at your group, we want them to actively discuss what they're learning and how they're growing, okay? So with that, you want to get people involved in the organization of your group and helping your group to happen each and every week. So here's some ideas to get people involved in the organization of your group each and every week. There's a lot of tasks and basic things you can have people do. And I got eight of them, actually. Eight ideas to get everybody involved in the organization of your group. Number one is a facilitator. That's probably you if you're watching this video. There's gotta be somebody that facilitates the discussion each and every week. Two is an assistant, co-leader, or an apprentice, right? So you're the facilitator, but you also need an assistant, a co-leader, or an apprentice, someone you can rely on, someone you're tra training to facilitate basic things like that, um, somebody that's kind of in the process, and that if you're sick on one week, that person can just step in and facilitate on your own. Or you maybe you have a, know you have a, a busy period of time coming up, you just say, hey, can you take this month of July and just facilitate for me? And they say, sure, right? A third way to get people involved is to have a prayer coordinator, okay? I got a, a video up there about how to have someone do prayer in your small group, um, but you're gonna have, maybe you assign somebody to bring a little journal each and every week, and they do the, they record the prayer requests, they facilitate the prayer time, and then they bring those prayer requests back each week to see how the prayers have been answered and what the group can keep praying on. A fourth idea is to have a snack coordinator, right? So you wanna get everybody involved in the bringing snacks for your group each and every week. Maybe you take somebody that's organized, and you know, good with details, they organize that snack sign-up list, they send a text message or an email or make a phone call each week to that person to remind him or her that it's their week to bring snacks, okay? Fifth idea is you can have a host, right? So just because you're the facilitator of your group doesn't mean you actually have to host the group at your group. Maybe there's somebody else that has a nice big living room or somebody that um, you know and loves having people over to their home and making a clean home and a welcoming environment. Let somebody in your group host the group at their house each and every week. A sixth idea for involving everybody are service projects. So maybe you wanna put some new um, landscaping bark out front of the church, or maybe there's a dead tree next to the church that needs to be chopped down. These are all examples of what our small groups have done. Um, and you put someone in charge in your groups. You know, there's a guy that comes each week, he's not really involved, he doesn't talk a lot, but you can tell he's good with his hands and he's a good handyman. Put him in charge of that project and let him be the leader for that service project. Or maybe a seventh idea is to have somebody communicate with the group each and every week about what lesson you're in, what the Bible passage is, what questions they need to work on. Somebody that can keep everybody up to date with what's going on in the group. That's another idea how you can get someone involved. And an eighth idea to get everybody involved in the organization of your group is maybe missions and outreach. Maybe your group wants to pray for some missionaries and you can assign someone in your group that stays in contact with the missionaries, um, gets updates and reports those updates to the group. So it's important to note, you know, as you get your small group going as a facilitator, at the beginning, you're gonna do all the work, right? You're, get, you're facilitating the lesson, you're hosting the group, you're providing the snacks, you're doing the prayer requests, all of those things. But as you start to get more and more people involved, you're gonna to have to communicate with them more and more often but because before it was just you, you didn't have to tell nobody because you were doing all the work. But as you start to get more and more people involved, you gotta communicate with them more and more and more and get everybody on the same page. So those are eight ways you can get everybody involved in the organization of your group and helping your group to happen each week. A facilitator, an apprentice, assistant, or co-leader, a prayer coordinator, snacks coordinator, a host, somebody that looks over the service projects, 
someone that communicates on the lessons, and somebody that stays in touch with the missionaries and outreach and things like that, okay? So now I want to talk to you about how do you get everybody involved in the discussion part of the group? How do you get everybody talking in the discussion and involved, okay? And there's three ways you want to get everybody involved in the discussion part of the group. Number one, don't answer your own questions. This is really simple, but is really, really important for small group facilitators. Let's say you got five people in your group, but you're the facilitator. You come there, you ask the question. They don't quite respond at first like you thought they would. So you just figure, I'm going to talk and I'll get them going. Well, then you talk for a couple minutes. And now the other four people in the group figure, well, I might as well not share. He's the leader, the facilitator. He's got the answers. What he said sounded good. So let's move on to the next question, right? So don't answer your own questions until other people have already had a chance to answer, right? So let's say you ask that question, nobody speaks up, just let them sit there in silence a little bit. You know, let them stew in it, let them think about it, then ask the question again, or rephrase it a little bit, or, you know, just kind of roll with it, or just move on to the next question if nobody's answering it, okay? But don't answer your own question. That's the number one principle to get everybody involved in the discussion, okay? Number two is you want to pace your study and keep the group moving, right? So number two, to get everybody involved in the discussion, you wanna pace your study and give plenty of time for discussion. You're the facilitator, you're the leader, and you need to pace the study and keep the schedule moving and make sure there's plenty of time for discussion by first having a schedule or a plan, right? If your group is supposed to start at 6.30 p.m. and there's nine people that are part of your group, but there's only three people there at 6.30, you start at 6.30. And then you just kind of let welcome people in as they're coming late. But don't wait for the people that are coming late. Have a schedule as a plan and stick to it and start on time. And then you wanna keep the discussion moving. Keep it going, keep it moving. Don't let them, you know, the natural tendency for each and every group is to start to drift, start to drift. Sometimes they drift related to the topic. Most of the time they don't. They just kinda, of, someone says something and says something and it reminds them of this and this story from 1985 and then you're, you're way out here and you're nowhere even near the discussion question you asked. And sometimes you can try to think and be creative and connect it back to your question. Other times you just got to bring it back and say, okay, we're moving on. Okay. So it's good to, it's good to have some, some phrases you can use, like a couple that I like to use when we're getting off topic. Well, I think we've covered this question thoroughly. Let's move on. Or we've talked about this question for quite a bit of time. I want to make sure we have time for the other questions. Let's move on. Right. Or sometimes you just say, we're a little off topic. Let's, I'm gonna bring us back, okay? And they'll kind of giggle and laugh, but that's your job as a facilitator. You gotta be assertive, keep them on track. So pace your study and make sure there's plenty of time for discussion. Don't spend too much time on, if you got 10 questions, don't spend half an hour on the first two questions and then you know half an hour on the last eight questions. Keep the study moving. The third way that you get everyone involved is that you wanna encourage everybody to participate, but don't force it. Okay, encourage them to participate, but don't force it, okay? And again, like I shared earlier, on Sundays, people come to church and they sit and they passively listen. But when they come to your group, we want them to actively discuss what they're learning and how they're growing. And so you do that by encouraging, you wanna encourage everyone to participate. Maybe you've asked a question, two or three people share, but there's some other people that haven't shared and they're usually the more quiet ones. Say, you know, I think we've all had a chance, you know, everyone, you've had a chance to share. Does everyone else have anything they want to add or share, right? So give those people that haven't had a chance to share a chance to talk, right? If you're ever facilitating your group and there's a quiet person that looks confused or looks like they have a question or they have something they want to say, then you want, might want to ask him or her. So, you know, you see the discussion going on. This person that's usually pretty quiet looks confused. Hey, Joe, did you have something you wanted to say or something you wanted to ask in a gentle, kind way? But you're just kind of opening up that opportunity for him to share and kind of shutting off the rest of the group and giving him a little bit of time. So that's what you want to do. If a quiet person ever does try to speak up and talk in your group and there's someone who's more talkative that talks a lot and they both start to talk at the same time, always try to focus on the more quiet person, right? So um, you can do this in a couple of ways. Me, it's just by my attention. If I notice two people start talking at once, this person's more talkative all the time, this person never shares, I just 
focus on him and I ignore that person. And usually they kind of get the hint and we're going this direction, right? Or I'll come back to that person if, if the more talkative person wears out. But if a quiet person ever does want to talk, you honor that person and you give them the attention they need and you encourage them and thank them for speaking up, okay? So again, you want to involve everyone the best you can in your small group. In the organization of your group by putting it together each and every week with those eight ideas that I gave you, but then also during the discussion time with the, the tips I gave you about how you don't want to answer your own questions. You want to make sure that you pace your study and give plenty of time for discussion and you encourage everyone to participate but don't force it. So I hope this is a helpful video for you as a facilitator as you learn to get everybody involved in your small group, organizing it and making it happen each week, but also in discussing what you're talking about in your group each and every week. My name is Christopher Scott. If you found this video helpful, you can subscribe up there and get updates on future videos. I got a bunch of other small group facilitator tips in a playlist right up there. And then if you want to learn um, some basic introductions to books of the Bible, I got a playlist over there of five minute introductions to books of the Bible. Or if you want to learn to facilitate a small group Bible study guide, I got some videos over there. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you again soon in another video.